They are insects. They have six legs like every other type of insect. They're related to aphids and cicadas. They are wingless. The adults have lost their wings over the evolutionary process, so they don't fly. They don't jump like fleas. They walk. They're about five millimeters long. Think of an apple seed when they're, when they're fully engorged. There are also the very, very tiny ones that are the size of, smaller than a poppy seed, and straw colored. The little first instars, the ones that hatch out first, when they're filled with blood, they look like a droplet of blood walking around. And you can see them uh, progress through the, the stages to the adult stage. These are the eggs. Aren't they funny? They're kind of bean shaped with a lid. And the nymph, that's the first instar after feeding, very small, but they're visible. The eggs are cemented in place wherever the bedbugs happen to lay them. It tends to be on wood and on fabric and cardboard or paper, um, but they'll really lay eggs anywhere they go. First thing they want to do is feed. Under good conditions, which is nice and warm, nice and humid, the whole life cycle from the egg to an adult who lays eggs can take four to five weeks. Think of the summer, an air conditioned apartment. You know, these things can cycle up very quickly. Cooler conditions will lengthen the life cycle. Cool conditions will not kill bed bugs. And the adults can live six to 12 months without a blood meal, and the nymphs can live up to three months without a meal. You can't abandon your home and expect bed bugs to go away or die. As we said before, bed bugs feed by piercing the skin. It's not unlike a mosquito bite. The bite is nearly painless because like ticks, like mosquitoes, they inject an anticoagulant and an analgesic or a painkiller. The saliva produces an inflammatory reaction, and the reactions will vary. You can have many, many bites from one bed bug as it grows up. So a nymph will feed over and over again. Bed bugs do live off the host. They like to live in quiet places where people sleep and rest. They don't like to be disturbed. They don't like to cling to you. They're not like body lice or anything. They don't transmit any diseases that we know of today. Oh. These are some gruesome pictures of bites. Oh, wow. What we typically hear from dermatologists is this breakfast, lunch, and dinner that there are always bed bug bites in groups of three. But it's not limited to three bites, and it's not always three. They'll get on you and bite once and hit the capillary they're looking for, and they'll stay. You might see painful pruritic lesions that's, you know, pustules or, or blisters. Um, you, of course, the itching. You might have pain. You know, secondary infections of the skin, it's always a um, risk. There's uh, the potential for anemia in severe cases. There are cases in the medical literature where um, the elderly or the very young are anemic as a result of a very heavy infestation, but you, you don't see that too often. There is a link between bed bugs and asthma, although that needs to be explored more. There could be pesticide overexposure, and that is usually because people try to self-treat, and I... Um, sort of have my ear to the ground when it comes to bed bugs and what individuals are doing, and they're buying um, restricted use pesticides on the internet and spraying their own homes with demand, with suspend. People um, are at risk of pesticide overexposure. Mostly anxiety, fatigue, the mental health issues that come about, and the financial strain on people is the biggest health risk. People don't um, feel that they can sleep in their bed and they don't feel that they can sleep through the night because they feel like they're being bitten constantly. But the worst thing is that the fear and anxiety of having bed bugs is reinforced by the fact that the only way to know you've gotten rid of them is to not be bitten. It's the anticipation of being bitten that people often can't get past. There are no bed bug nests. They live in aggregations because they have an aggregation pheromone and that says, you know, I'm a bed bug, I'm living over here. It's pretty quiet, you know, it's pretty nice. So more bed bugs will live there and the eggs will hatch there. They will travel a good distance to locate a host. If a host leaves the premises or the apartment or that room, the bed bugs will travel. The story uh, I heard was a woman had gone to Cuba and come back and she had brought bed bugs home to her New York City apartment. And she had a railroad apartment, which is like a string of five rooms, one end to the other. So she put her luggage at the first room in the closet and her bedroom was at the other end of the apartment and it took th three weeks for those bed bugs to find her. So they'll travel to find you and if uh, an apartment is abandoned and there are people next door, they'll find their way through to the next apartment. The, um, the worst case scenario, bed bug infestations, uh, you'll see bed bugs crawling around all day. If the 
problem is at a very low level or an early stage, you won't see them during the day. They can be transported passively, like I said, being moved on luggage, but they can be transported actively by walking, by going places, looking for hosts. So where do they come from? This is a question we get all the time. You can get bed bugs anywhere. The recent trend I've seen is that kids coming home from college are bringing them to their parents' house. So the bottom line is that bedbugs can be anywhere. It's not that they are everywhere, but they can be anywhere.